My name is Jules Pierre. My company is Daily Gromit. And our company is about helping people find the products, the people, and the companies that really support their own values. So my story is, um, I always do things that are new. I've never had a job or done anything anyone ever did before. So I'm, I'm working on my third startup, Daily Gromit. And there was, there was a bit of a aha, aha moment for this company. I, um, in between my first and second startups, worked for big companies. And I was working for Play School, the toy company. And we had wonderful development capability and all kinds of passionate designers and engineers. And our product line got halved in just two years. And the reason is that our distribution, our customers, went from very many independent toy stores to four big chain stores. And they just really wanted mainstream, high volume, high margin product. And so they didn't really care about developmental needs of infants and toddlers. That wasn't their business model. And so this is just wrong. And I kind of just like stewed over it for a while, like, oh, this is just a shame. And being an industrial designer, I really saw the shame of it. And then when social media came along, and I actually, my second startup, I was president of a social network, I said, ah, you're like, now we have the power. Actually, we can grab this back. We can grab back the shelves. We can decide, right? Because we, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or blogs, we can make a movie or a presidential candidate in a weekend, practically, right? And what's even more important, 65% of our economy is consumer products. The things we buy or don't buy are votes, right? They're votes for or against something. And it's the simplest thing we do. But to do it with knowledge and power and actually get to shape the economy, now that's a different animal, right? It's not waiting around for buyers and big stores to decide who gets support. We decide. That's the idea here. An example of my strength would be intuition and also curiosity. And I learned that at a pretty young age. I grew up in, on the wrong side of the tracks in Detroit and went to Detroit public schools. And when I was 14, a teacher encouraged me to apply to private school. And it was a big risky move, boarding school. I got a scholarship. And I learned the benefit of being super uncomfortable, like what happens, what good things can happen. And I've sought that all, all my life. I became an industrial designer. And industrial designer designs products from something from nothing. Your, your job is a blank piece of paper every day. That can be really intimidating for a lot of people. It's not for me. It's sort of a process I figure out, OK, what's the white space? What isn't being served by, other, by businesses or products or companies or people and, and, and fix that? And so it's a natural extension to go from being a designer and doing something that's kind of a high performance job into creating a whole company to be an entrepreneur just makes perfect sense to me to look at a broader picture and say okay a company should do this not just a product well i think of women entrepreneurs first when i'm giving advice and i think um, think big and don't wait i think women bound their ideas quite often i just see they bound themselves and they bound their ideas. I've seen this, my sister told me this, this little anecdote about when a man looks at a job description thinking of applying and there are 10 qualities. And if he has two of them and does, lacks the other eight, he'll go for it. Like, I'm in, I'm the best candidate. And women will say, oh, I have eight, but I don't have the other two. That's just so wrong. You know, we shouldn't do that to ourselves. And it's the same, same with companies. Like, don't wait till you're ready, because you are ready. I don't care if you're 22 or you're 62, you're ready. And don't bound how big the idea is, because you can do it. You can, I mean, just think about, we're so good at school, right? We sit, sit next to guys who are no smarter or less smart, and we excel, right? Well, companies and building enterprises, we have so many strengths we can we rely on. Just extend what you might have been like in school or other parts of your life to a company. It's not that different. Well, I'm really proud that we've raised um, just under $4 million to date and taken the business to where we have to prove the economics, to prove the viability, to prove that people care about what we're doing at Daily Gromit. What's next is actually raise the resources to build the business to a scale that matters. Because if I really want to impact the consumer economy, 65% of our economy, this cannot be a small business. It actually needs to be a billion dollar business and I see that 
path and I see the resources required. And so three things I'd like to see happen in the next funding raise is I'd like to see my investors, my wonderful angel investors, be rewarded with um, a nice uptick in the valuation to, to recognize what they saw early on in Daily Gromit. The resources will mean that my team, which has been honestly running like gerbils in wheels for a really, really long time, might have another gerbil next to them in the wheel. That would be really nice for people to get help to do what they, they need to do. And then for me, I have to get out and evangelize what I consider not just a business, but a movement. Um, we trademark this term, citizen commerce, this idea of let's shape the economy together. And I need to articulate that, and that means hit the road, basically get out and find and highlight the other people who are doing it, because we're not doing this alone, but really give everybody a voice for this.